Hotel, bend down your operator. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediator is here. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. So let's waste no time. Let's get to it. Story number one. How many more layoffs can this economy take? Charles Schwab uh, will merge with TD Ameritrade and is set to lay off about a thousand workers. That is not showing good, a good sign for the job market. Multiple, multiple reports in the past weeks have focused on the growing jobless problem and the markets. And uh, that and this has this COVID-19 has put a huge hit on the markets as this story continues to develop. Keep an eye on story number one. Big, big headline. Big, big developing news story. Story number two. Many Americans are in need of financial relief immediately. So why is the government holding back? Millions could lose unemployment benefits by the end of the year if the government does not act quit quickly, according to some reports. BuzzFeed has said, that, uh, saying that people literally have nothing left. Some people... Uh, because of the pandemic, this is not good, especially for the uh, economy and for the financial markets, period. It is clear that the government has to come up with some big ideas fast to fuel, the econo to fuel more economic hopes as uh, some people are going homeless, missing their rent payments, missing their mortgage payments, and they're looking and praying probably for another stimulus deal to be reached. So story number two, big, big headline. Big, big developing news story. Story number three. Trump's border wall and immigration policies are coming with a big price tag. Huge. Now, reports by ProPublica goes in detail about the cost of Trump's border wall. Uh, they're saying that it is costing taxpayers billions more than expected in contracts. So they're saying as they keep building, more bills keep coming with this uh, wall. Now, it's clear that it may be too late to turn back now, but some may be uh, too afraid to, to to say it. They may be afraid to speak up about what's going on at the border. Uh, but American taxpayers and military are getting raped. I, I say that word, they're, they're probably getting they're most likely getting raped with this with these border wall contracts, especially in the area of COVID-19. Now, what I, the reason why I use that, uh, that term is because sometimes when there's uh, added expenses, you may have a projection and an estimate, and then next thing you know, uh, the contractors you keep adding on more expenses because uh, that's an expensive wall and it's coming right out of the taxpayer and probably military budget. Stay tuned to this story. I, I hate to use a term like that. I try to be as soft as possible sometimes, but but that's the reality. Uh, taxpayers are paying quite a bit for that border wall. So uh, story number three, <sighs> somebody's going to be feeling real shaky. Uh, if something happens to this wall, it's an expensive wall. Story number four. There are still mixed feelings on how serious the coronavirus is. A large number of reports are circulating about another spike in coronavirus cases. But a lot of people feel that we should now know enough about this disease to have a handle on it by now. Reports say that the country is now locking an average of 72,000 cases a day. Some people are saying that they're not reporting who is actually surviving and how uh, this virus is not that serious. Here's another headline. A poll in Vox says that most Trump voters do not see COVID-19 as an important election issue. The polls say that about 24% feel COVID-19 is not a real problem or a real issue. So that shows you how some people just don't feel this disease is wrapped up to what the hype that is claimed to be. This is why story number four made it this week. This story is still developing because of those conflicting views when it comes to COVID-19. Even the president is downplaying this disease. Now, that is an important uh, talking point. The president, the leader of the free world, 
when you've seen two, over 200,000 people pass away, you're still downplaying a disease. So we'll see how story number four develops. Well, those are our top four international headlines of developing news stories that made it in. I'll be right back with the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made it in this week. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. You're the mediator with me, Brian West. If you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. If you go to the website, it's M-E-T-H-O-D, the number at INC.com, method 8 com. where you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. So let's waste no time. Woo-wee! Get on up. Get up. Get the feeling like a dancing machine. Ooh, yeah. Let's get baby, baby, baby. Let's get to it. Ooh, let's get to it. <sighs> Story number five. Tough being the media, but somebody's got to do it. The education system may be taking a hit because of COVID-19. Revenue shortfalls, falling enrollment, and even lost tuition could be putting colleges in extreme financial distress, according to a CNBC article. Detroit's education system is on the upswing as the district was released from 11 years of state oversight. Uh, this is history because the city overcame deficits in the hundreds of millions and could provide a, fina- a formula for other struggling districts. Big, big headline. D- does it- <laughs> That's a big, big headline. Desetra uh, News has a report about how uh, Amendment G could change how Utah is funded when it comes to education. Uh, Utah trails other states when uh, it comes to education funding. Uh, I just have to give it to these teachers. They are hanging in there. It's been very, very tough inside of Sterling Five with all this uh, COVID and all how all these teachers, even in the college, the classroom, public schools, private schools, they have tried their best to hang in there and try to get keep students educated. So if there's some teachers out there, my heart goes out to you. Uh, Biden proposes a, a $10,000 uh, forgiveness package in student, in student loan debt for public, uh, if students get in public service so there's an exchange he wants to exchange public service for student loan debt so a uh, story number five big big headline you can see why i made it in this week it's, it's in all the fine details that these teachers and professors they're doing everything they can to keep uh, the next generation educated big big headline big big developing news story. story number six is the world failing when it comes to COVID 19 Now, with COVID-19 cases continuing to rise and stocks taking a tumble, a lot of people are wondering if the world is failing to stop COVID-19. People are just tired of it. Officials have tried everything to contain this virus, but as cases continue to rise, a lot of people are concerned about if the world is in trouble, uh, especially when it comes to to stopping the spread of COVID-19. Now, it could be clear that as cases continue to rise and the president continues to down play the virus they'll st- there still seems to be some confusion when it comes to how serious this virus really is one report says that about 11 percent of u.s children have been infected with covid 19 that's about 800,000 kids now this is adding more weight to a growing concern on how the world is dealing with this disease and if it will play a f- it will play a factor and more problems in the future. Big, big headline. Many school systems, especially Chicago, see a, see no interest in returning to in-person classes, citing safety concerns and an eagerness to prevent the spread of coronavirus. So uh, schools are opting out of going back in, uh, into in-person classes. WHO, the World Health Organization, who says that giving up on efforts to control COVID-19 would be dangerous This, as hospitals are preparing for the worst case scenarios. A lot going on in status story number six. The CDC says that COVID-19 is behind two thirds of, in, of, of increased deaths inside of the United States. Story number six is a big, big story. That's why it almost made it to the top two this week. 
big big headline story number seven in the top two international headlines in developing news stories that made it this week Whew. how will the future look now that certain sensitive issues have been addressed in 2020 we're almost headed into 2021 as people adjust to the new normal when it comes to american politics and the emerging sensitive issues facing the american people a lot of hardworking Americans are wondering how will the future look for America, the United States, with so much attention being centered around issues that really lack substance. Many Americans are mainly concerned about keeping certain traditions alive and maintaining unity and stability, especially as we approach the holidays. A proposal by Portland officials to cut their police budget by 18 million and gear it towards community assistance made headlines also after growing concerns about police brutality and how the police interact with the public remain a top concern. Story number seven is a hot topic. A Forbes report points out how as the world changes, old economic ways, old economic uh, strategies may no longer apply due to how we are consuming and changing our spending habits. This is just one of many stories adding to economic studies and consumer behavior. Story number seven is a story that is revealing what the future may look like and how the present is playing a big role in what that picture may, how that picture may look. Big, big headline, big, big developing news. Story number eight in the top international headline and develop a new story that made it this week. Counting the votes is a top concern. But why are people upset about who de who you decide to vote for? That is your choice. People are upset about it. Hate know you for voting for the candidate that you like. Michigan voters witnessed one million absentee ballots that were not returned. And election day is this week. So... That's one million absentee T ballots that lost. Highlight this is also highlighting a growing concern about how accurate uh, this next this voting election will be, how accurate the counting will be. Sternum rate is a big big headline. That's why it's at the top. People are threatening old ladies running over signs and even assaulting people because of who they decide to vote for, what sign they put in their front yard. Now, the truth of the matter is that if people see the need to be active in their civic duty, then that really shouldn't be a problem. That's really all that matters is that they're exercising their civic duty. Now, this is a story that keeps changing due to the present political climate here in America. The United States has a history of aggressive political activists. Another headline report by Fox News says that election meddling by Iran, Russia, and China continues to amp up as more voting uh, concerns grow. Big, big headline. Polls show that many Trump supporters are afraid to go public about their support for Trump. Some Trump supporters have been uh, attacked, physically beaten up for their support for the president, according to multiple reports. This is also the case for Joe Biden in some places as well. Facebook's online voter registration drive got a record 4.4 million voters to register. The last headline I made it this week. One report says that Americans are buying guns and toilet paper in preparation for election day violence please please keep it civil folks and let's not uh get hostile uh, we, don't forget uh veterans day is also coming too so shout out to all the veterans out there i'll try to do that this week and after the uh, veterans day so uh shout out to all the people who are working hard and trying to do things the right way and have the uh, keep in the spirit of the not only their uh, patri uh patriotism and all the stuff it, it, it just we just have to be civil big big headlines that made it this week so i hope you got something out of today's program i always do uh doing the research as usual i like to thank all the news outlets the journalists the people in the front lines you deserve all the credit i'm just the media i want to thank you so much for tuning in this week if you want to show us some support visit the website on the screen buy something click on something watch something read something or just sponsor program and uh i'll be right back next week after i leave out of here
head, head home, take a break, and come back and give you 200 or more stories to look over on the website and for me to read through so you can have something to stand for. So thank you for tuning in this week, and have a good week, everybody. Thank you for tuning in the meeting with me, Brian West. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediator is here.